What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another video. <clears throat> in today's video, we're going to talk about that Hyundai Sonata. The Hyundai Sonata that I just bought two months ago, we already sold it. We had to. It was a problem child. We had numerous issues from it, like repair after repair after repair. When it wasn't a repair that was mechanical, it was something somebody wrecked it or did something crazy to it. So we had to get rid of that car. And that's what this video is going to be about. I'm going to tell you guys or show you guys my process on what I've dealt with with this car, the good, how much I profited or how much I lost off the vehicle and my experience with the car because it was a hell of an experience i've only had the car for like three months and it's already it was a shit show i'll be honest but let's get right into the video if you're interested in what happened with this car stay tuned for the whole entire video let's get right into it now for those people that are new to the channel your first time seeing me on camera or seeing me in front of your face my name is camry i do toro i've been doing toro for a little bit over a year i scaled to about 10 cars within a year while being a full-time college student and also being the youngest power host in my city and that's enough about me let's get right into the car so for the people that have been watching me for a couple months <clears throat> you may have already seen this video but i i made a video about me actually purchasing this car i per i make a video about every car i purchase so uh, that's on the channel i'll put the link up if you guys want to take a look at it but i bought the car back in february towards the end of february drove all the way to I think it was like Columbus, Ohio. That's like two hours away from where I live. I drove that far because it was a hell of a deal. It's a 2016 Hyundai Sonata. It got Apple CarPlay. It had, it had pretty good features for its year, for its age, and for the price. And I bought that car for $6,000. So that was hell of a steal. Hell of a deal. When I finally got to the dealership, it was a little fishy. It wasn't even a dealership. It was like them little small, I hear, pay here type lots. Cars in the back were still bumpers missing type car lots. Bumpers have fallen off. What do I do with her? Hmm? I sell her. And at that point, I was already there. I said, man, you gotta finish, go through with it. If the car's cool, it's cool. I just drove the car, drove fine. Everything was smooth with the car, had no issues. I went ahead and finalized the paperwork, bought the car. Uh, on the way home, I didn't even hit the expressway yet. The check engine light pops on. And I'm like, oh boy, what is this for? So I run into AutoZone, there's a code, and the code comes back as a Cadillac converter code which mean, it, was, it said something like the Cadillac converter was either like, it was dirty or it needed to, needed to be replaced. So anybody that knows about cars knows that Cadillac converters are extremely expensive to get fixed. People steal those all the time and everything like that. So that kind of had me down on the vehicle. I already had a bad mojo about it. I was getting a bad vibe from it, but I was like, man, let me just bite this bullet and it is what it is. Let me just get it fixed and so we can get some money out of this car. So I eventually got that fixed. I got that fixed. It cost me about, I would say a thousand dollars to get fixed. Finally got it back on the platform after probably a month after buying it. It gets it on the platform. A couple trips in, I get a, uh, a message from the guest. Oh, the car is running funny. It's not doing something right, blah. I'm like, oh man, what's wrong with this car now? So he, he returns the car. When I get to the car, it sounds like a Hellcat. It sounds like there was a muffler, muffler delete on the vehicle. So I'm like, man, what is wrong with this vehicle? So I took it back to the muffler shop again. Uh, he was like, oh man, one of the, the donut boat, something, the donut boat or something like that came loose. We just got to tighten that up and you'll be on your way. They tighten that up, did it for free, back on the road. Two trips later, something else happens. Same thing. Oh, it's a donut boat. Tighten it up, you on your way. I just, I'm like, I don't know, maybe they just, I don't know. As long as it's getting fixed or whatever. At this point, I was already kind of weary and I was already like, should I sell this car? I want to keep dealing with it. After that, check engine light pops up again for something totally different. It was for something, I don't even remember what it was. It was for something, something totally different. I took it to a different shop. He fixed it. It cost like 200, got that fixed. Put it back on the road. A couple weeks later, check into like again for something else. I'm like, bro, what is wrong with this car? Somebody put a spell on this car. The check into like again. So I'm just, I'm just like throwing money into it. Just throwing all kind of money in this car to get it fixed and get it re uh, back on the road. Um, and at this point, I'm just like, I was contemplating selling it or whatever. But I'm like, let me just stick through it. I'm putting this money into it. Let me at least, at least try to make my money back. And then it was on, a, it was on the road again. It was cool. And then right after that, somebody had physically damaged the car they hit like a curb or something like that the whole bumper had to get replaced so we replaced the bumper luckily we didn't have to come out of pocket uh, with that for real but the vehicle was down for a month just off of that because trying to get it repaired and stuff after that got the car back it was good check engine light is on again this time it's the check engine light is on for the ambient temperature sensor which is, all it is is just like the you know, dashboard that shows the temperature that's outside that's all it is so it's not nothing serious, but it, I think it started getting worse to the point where it was like affecting the AC. So I had to take it off the platform again and get that looked at. I took it to uh, tire discounters to get a, a inspection. They, oh, it's just a sensor. You just got to replace it. 
but place it again. Took it to a uh, Hyundai dealership. Oh, it's a sensor. You just gotta replace it. Replace it again. And it still was having the same issues. I said, man, I'm done with this car. So at that point, I listed it for sale. I listed it for eight grand. I, I got some bites on it, not nothing crazy. I had three serious buyers, but they were all kind of on games. They would come see the car, test drive it, everything. And then they just, they just like were kind of, they would say they were serious, but they wouldn't buy it. And then eventually I ended up selling the car for 7,000. I sold it like two days ago. So I'm finally from underneath that car. The sawdust quiets for years and lets the engine run as sweet as a nut for a couple of miles. <laughs> Daddy, that's cheap. Yeah, I told them that what was wrong with the car, a uh, cool car. They got a hell of a deal on it. I sold it for 7,000. That's a hell of a deal to me. They had 104,000 miles on it. It just had the ambient tension sensor that was wrong. So I, I told them what was wrong with it. Hey, I'm going a, I'm to a hand it off to y'all because I'm not dealing with that. Uh, they were well aware of what was wrong with the car. So I told them I'm not the type of person that's going to like scam somebody. You feel me? I'm not that type of person. But so now I'm going to break down to y'all how much I pay for the car, how much money I put into the car, and how much I sold it for, and how much I profit. So this is the breakdown of the expenses like the breakdown of the whole entire car. So I paid $6,066 for the car. I paid about five, $400 in taxes. Now the repairs, I spent about $1,060, um, which I honestly think was more than that. I might've miscalculated. So that's why I put right here, plus or minus. And then total invested was $7,521, plus or minus one to $200. Um, and the total income we made was just over three thousand dollars off of the car, um, so that's not bad over the span of what two, three months. Half of the half of that time, it wasn't even really listed. And then this is our break even, even point. So we needed to make four thousand five hundred dollars to selling the car to break even, and we sold the car for seven thousand dollars. So our profit was two thousand. Basically twenty five hundred dollars, which ain't which isn't bad at all. That's actually pretty decent, especially with what I was going through with that car. So I'm not complaining at all. I'm still happy about, like, joyful about that. I walked away from that car not being upside down. We still made some profit off of it. And then I have the seven thousand. I'm gonna roll into another car, and I have access to dealer auctions now, so I, I can probably get something much better higher quality and things like that. And I can actually see the car at the auction before I even buy it. So. I think that's what I'm gonna do. And that's pretty much the story with this car. It was hell that I went through with this car. It was crazy. So now I'm just relieved. It was like a, a, a bag of bricks was on my back and it's holding me down with this car. So I'm just grateful that I'm from under it. Another thing that I wanna add before the end of this video is the reason, I think the reason why I kept, I made a bad purchase is because I was kind of itching to scale. Like I was itching to scale. I was itching to add more car, cars to my fleet. I became, addicted to adding cars and, and grow my business. And this can be a bad thing. Cause as you saw, I made a bad purchase that can cost me lots of money. Like I have to learn to be patient when it's time for something to happen, let it happen. If it's not the right time, it's not the right time. That's why now I've kind of slowed down on growing my fleet. And I'm kind of just focused on fixing the nicks and crannies in my business so I can succeed for the future. Don't, don't start itching to add vehicles Take your time, take it slow, it's okay. Like, it's, it's not going anywhere. The main thing is just really, when you go to look at cars, you gotta be weary of these cars, man. Like, I don't know if anybody else has a story like that, but that was crazy. I ain't never had no issues like that before, but yeah, it was time to go. I'm glad I sold it, but kinda all I got for y'all today, hopefully I learned a thing or two from this story. It was kinda concise and to the point, but I didn't wanna make this video crazy long. So, subscribe to the channel if you like this video. If you have any questions, anything like that, leave them down in the comment section below. I'll try to answer, answer them to the best of my ability. And uh, if you have any requests on videos you want me to drop, feel free to leave them down there as well. I will make those videos. So that's all I got for you. That's all I got for you guys today. Hopefully it was beneficial to you. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.